Well, we're back with Ken Keyes with Consulting Research Group, and I have the great privilege today of talking about specifically your strengths and weaknesses. Welcome, Ken. You Welcome, know, Brian. I've, I've enjoyed your, your last uh, interview with Laura Lynn, and uh, I, I promise um, <laughs> this will not be a personal counseling session, but I saw in the back of your book it says, uh, learn to better understand and appreciate yourself and people around you. Mm -hmm. I think you need to help me in that area. And it, 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 there's another point that it says, discover why certain individuals irritate you. And so uh, your list, you're bringing your list during the show, is that what you would like? No, but I am taking, <laughs> I am taking notes though. <laughs> so, I, you know, you have had the, uh, the great distinction of uh, working with individuals, marriages, um, universities, as well as businesses. Um, yes. But it's, it's not just another self-help, and it's not just a, another uh, motivational speaker. You come no. from a Christian filter, a Christian perspective. Tell us about that. Well, actually, the roots of Consulting Resource Group were, was founded by Dr. Terry Anderson in 1979 through Trinity Western University in British Columbia, which is a Christian university. Mm -hmm. Happens to be where my son is attending right now. So everything that we've built is on a Christian worldview. Yes. Yet we equally serve the corporate world as well as we do ministries or individuals of faith. And so that's part of our marketplace ministry. Mm -hmm. And we're global. And when I have people in the room, I certify other professionals in our, our materials. So when I have somebody, a Muslim from Iran in our program, that is just part of the ministry to be able to reach out to those individuals. So uh, it's just a privilege to be able to kind of serve globally in that way. You know, I, I, I love your, your focus because even with Trinity Western, I mean, they have been uh, a vanguard in that area as far as leading the way. You know, when, when we look at the scripture, it says that uh, the sons of this world are more shrewd than the sons of the kingdom of light. Mm -hmm. And it just gripes me every time I see that. So when I, I, I look at these resources, and, and I love this, why aren't you more like me? Um, why'd, you, uh, why'd you come up with this particular piece? Well, when we, th we think, because all of us, I mean, uh, those of us that are married, and now I've been married for 21 years, it, yeah. if, and this is the person we love. Have we ever had disagreements with the significant other, with our partner, with our spouse, yes. or with our kids that we love? I said, well, you know, why aren't you like more like me? What's your problem? Yes. And so we filter how people should act, how they should conduct themselves through our eyes. And so each of our eyes or each of our personal styles are unique to ourselves. Yes. And so it's not wrong, it's not right, but we have this diversity amongst us. And so that's where, you know, I need to play to my strengths. You know, we were talking about that off where it's so, okay, I'm not trying to be like Brian and Brian's not trying to be like me, but right. a lot of times people try to mimic other people. So why wouldn't you think like me? Or why don't you clean up your room and you're talking to your teenager, all these different things, yes. is that they're just different. And so can I understand those differences and actually be okay with the strengths that I bring? Now, you have an interesting perspective because you don't focus as much on the weakness as you focus on the strength. Absolutely. We, we may have a statement is that uh, developing your weaknesses is highly overrated is that I want to play to the strengths that I've given. That's not to say that I don't acknowledge my weaknesses, that I don't look at those and see the gaps that are there, that I don't have people that I can bring around me. And maybe my spouse just said, oh, I'm seeing, Brian, that's something you didn't see, when in yeah. fact, uh, you know, that's their job or that's their uh, gifting that they have as, as part of that process. So we want to play to those strengths because that's where I can bring my highest level of energy, my highest level of competence, my f highest level of engagement, rather than feeling guilty. And you know, guilt is really, that, that's a sin. Is sure. I'm not going to feel guilty about what I can't do. I'm going to focus on what I can do. Yeah, you know, it's been said that any strength pushed to an extreme becomes a weakness. And especially this time of year, you know, you're going into the new year and people yeah. are looking at what they didn't accomplish or what the right. challenges that they're facing. So give us some practical areas. I, I love your, your, your style shifting. And, and I, I believe that style shifting is, 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 is key because it's not necessarily getting rid of stuff, but it's beginning to shift our focus. What, it's the opposite of being self-centered, Brian. And okay. so, so I say play to our strengths, but we have a statement that says you don't use your personal style as an excuse for your behavior. Mm. And so I see that another person. So now You if, need to say that again because some, <laughs> someone is looking right now and the wife is saying, what? Well, <laughs> Making let excuses. me talk to them. Yeah. This is that you don't use your style as an excuse for your behavior. Mm -hmm. 
is that even though I might be a certain way, that's just the way that I am and just suck it up. Yeah. And really, no, that's actually a self-centered way. So we play to our strengths. Right. But at the same time, Brian says, you know what? If you need me to be more attentive, if you need me to be more detailed oriented at the moment yes. and to be able to take care of those things for you, maybe I will shift and adjust my uh, approach to you to, to build a relationship. It's all about relationship. Yeah. There's nobody watching the show that doesn't have a relationship somewhere. Right. Unless you're just, you know, a hermit. And why would you have TV if you're a hermit? Now, Ken, as soon as you said that, some woman said, oh, do you know what? Help me with that. Show me how to do that. Now, now give us some practicals of that because do, do we start off by, by taking an inventory? Because I, I, love, I love this particular piece that you have, values, preference, indicator. And, and being able to uh, take a, a diagnostic of that. Tell us about that. Well, one of the things is that all of us have what we call behavioral values, things that are internal motivators yeah. that are important to us. And here's the reality, you can't have 21 number one values. You can't have 100 values that are all priority for you. So right. what might be important to you might be challenge and independence. But for me, I'm your significant other is, is tranquility. Okay. So I just want to recover. I want to kind of have my own space. Leave me alone, Brian. Yes. Well, no, no, I want to go do something together. Yes. And so we have this push and pull where our needs are different. They're not wrong. And right. so one of the biggest, the most difficult things for us to do, Brian, is to spend our own needs mm. and defer to yours. And so the practical part is to, and I've to teach that, you have to practice that. Okay. It's because everything in your body, you know the flesh, the flesh sure. wants to go in a certain direction <laughs> and it wants to get angry, it wants to get upset and say, yeah. no, I want it my way. And instead, really, I need to suspend and not get emotionally hooked. Yes. Say, what does Brian need from me? What does Laura Lynn need from me? What does Sharon need from me? Whoever it might be. And be able to kind of focus on need. And what we teach people is what your needs are, what their needs are, yeah. and how to adjust and the behaviors that each group might require, including your kids. Yes. Because we have an old saying, why don't you lead the way that I follow, right? And so some of your kids, your parenting style with them is actually breaking relationship rather than building relationship. You know, I, I, I laugh about Laura Lynn, uh, but we really get along great because I, I love her, her sense of humor and also her levity. Um, and many times, you know, in ministry and pastoring and also in speaking, yeah. I find that, you know, you can get very tunnel vision. Um, Ken, we're going to talk about it a little bit more. I know yes. there's a lot of people that are really benefiting from this. Thank you for the, your insight. You're welcome. You're not going to want to miss this. And uh, please encourage someone else to, to take a look at this. All week, Ken Keyes is going to be here.